Hello YouTubers, Rob here. Um, secondary, transfer to secondary day for my uh, £20 Wilkinson's wine kit. It's been eight days now and uh, you only get one demi on with the Wilkinson's kit and I think you're supposed to possibly have two. Um, it would push the price of the wine kit up so I guess that's why they only ship it with one. And then they really want you to do the whole process in just one vessel and then just siphon that then into a bottling bag and they give you a little box for that to go in. There's a little foil bag in there with the tap as you'd expect um, instead of bottling. <clears throat> um, so a lot of people will think, having read up a bit more about wine, um, have secondary devices which are second decamine johns and you've got to siphon between one and wait till that to clear, maybe siphon again, maybe siphon again and again. Um, and I've got a massive, massive fear of siphons. I can't get them to work and um, ah, there's a siphon, okay? I don't like these things. Um, so it's an auto siphon as well, it's not a bad one. Uh, I'd attest for them maybe by the, the most pucker I could and I still don't like it. I still make it, get horrendous results from it, get it wrong, get bubbles going on and all sorts. So I like to use taps where I can. So this is kind of my general concept. I'm going to transfer my primary wine into this vessel here. It's going to go up to about there. This is a five litre, one pound six, litre, um, one pound six bottle of water from Asda up the road. Um, I've added a, a pressed valve, which is from a bike tyre. Uh, so the spare bike tyre knocking about. So I took out the, uh, the tube there. I left the rubber in the back and put some rubber around here as well. Just cut the tyre up and I've sealed that using a plumber's wrench just to get it real tight. Um, still not perfectly watertight, it pretty much is. I mean if it fell over it wouldn't leak huge quantities very quickly. Um, it does let a little bit of air in still but to be honest it's a pretty good effort. Um, it doesn't necessarily need to hold air fully. So um, pressure does have to build up here to let the air out in the same way pressure has to build up in here to let the air out or the um, CO2 out, should I say, more than air. Um, so I'm going to transfer into this, I'm going to let this thing do its job, it will do another 10 days. At some point I think I've got to put in some finings or whatever and gunk out and drop out some of this gunk. What I'll do, I will eventually undo this, I haven't quite worked out my timings, when I'm ready. I will take this out of its cap. Put a one inch hole in that and I've shaved down that bung a little bit with a bit of uh, kind of a bench grinder. You could use sandpaper for that just to take uh, the, some of the thickness out of it because it doesn't quite fit a one inch normal standard spigot hole. Then I'm going to bang a spigot in, as you'll see here, is the one I've prepared earlier, and my little back nut that goes screwing on here like this. Tighten that up, make sure that's nice and watertight, sealed. Pop that on here, like this. I don't know why my accent's changed. Okay. And then I'll lay it down probably, just like that. Just like that. Alright, you can see it's got like a little filtered trap thing there anyway. It's a uh, useful beer. See why it won't work for wine. Um, the reason I've got this on here is so that I can purge air. Well, if it was more tight, airtight, I could probably purge the air by crushing this down, getting rid of any oxygen at all, really. Um, but I'm not that fussed about it. I think it would just suck it back in at the moment. Um, I could glue it, but I'm not going to bother. So um, I'm just going to eventually, once it's done its thing, lay it down, let some of the remaining, any remaining crud just sit around the bottom here. Um, and then open the tap to, to get it out, either into, you could do it into a bottle, or I'm going to do it into my bag. So I'll either hold my bag up and do it, or I'll use a little tube attachment, as you'd expect, and put it into the bag that way. Um, you need to put this valve on, obviously, to stop the vacuum and to stop any back glugging, because otherwise it's just going to glug oxygen back in, blug, 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 blug. fill your wine up with oxygen, not what you want. So a little spin of the valve, it's just all it needs to let the air come out and it flows nice and smoothly with no glugs and that's, I've tested that with water, it worked fine, don't see why it wouldn't work for wine. Um, half thinking of putting some kind of cotton wool or some kind of filtering gauze 
in there as well, just to kind of get rid of any sediment like filter, the sediment possibly. I see these sediment filters and all these things that wine connoisseurs, I guess, would, would use. And it's my first ever batch, I'm on a budget, you know, I might get it all wrong. The wine might taste like poop. So I don't want to go spending fortunes, but I think that's just a really cost effective way of um, transferring to secondary, easy bottling process, avoiding the siphons. In the future, I might just buy two of these bottles and do away with the glass dummy, John. If there's any reason why you think I shouldn't do that or couldn't do that or whatever you think this idea is bound for failure, you've got very little time to tell me this because I'm about to do it anyway. Um, then comment, you know, please add some comments, see what you think. If you think you're going to use this method yourself, let me know. If you think it's a waste of time, let me know as usual. Thank you for watching. I'm Superman.